If you guys were hoping old Nan got a bit more love in the books, I have some bad news for y'all. She's kind of thrown on the back burner like she is in Game of Thrones. The only reason I'm talking about her now is she may be more relevant than ever if the Dunkin' Egg spinoff gets greenlit by HBO. She may be a major character in that prequel depending on which direction the writers want to go. But in the more present setting, I would say she's been neglected considering how interesting this character is. There is some info sprinkled in the last two books that detail her current condition that I'm about to dive into, but overall, she's been barely mentioned since Bran left Winterfell to head on his own journey. After Theon Greyjoy took the poorly guarded Winterfell in the second book, Earl Nan kind of lost her purpose in the castle, since prior she was a serving woman allocated to knitting and babysitting for all the noble pups. She had a hand in raising so many Starks, so no harm could ever come her way while they were around. By this point in the story, she could very well be in her late 90s. No one really knows how old she is, but what she is known for is her stories. Stories strangely accurate considering how far down history this world can stretch. In that darkness, the White Walkers came for the first time. They swept through cities and kingdoms, riding their dead horses, hunting with their packs of pale spiders, big as hounds. From all that living, she stockpiled an encyclopedia's worth of lore for us. From tales from her era and even thousands of years prior, she has it all. She's the North's resident expert on backstory. Even now, when her mind is slowly failing her, though she is sharper than most in her age range, despite mixing up some people like little Bran Stark and some of his ancestors named Brandon that she cared for. Bran informs us he had liked Old Nan and her stories once before, but it was different now. They left her with him all day now, to watch over him and clean him and keep him from being lonely. But she just made it worse. I hate your stupid stories. The old woman smiled at him toothlessly. My stories? No, my little lord, not mine. The stories are before me and after me, before you too. She was a very ugly old woman, Bran thought spitefully. Shrunken and wrinkled, almost blind. Too weak to climb stairs, with only a few wisps of white hair left to cover a mild pink scalp. No one really knew how old she was, but his father said she'd been called Old Nan even when he was a boy. So she was the oldest person in Winterfell for certain. Maybe the oldest person in the Seven Kingdoms. Nan had come to the castle as a wet nurse for Brandon Stark, whose mother had died birthing him. He had been an older brother of Lord Rickard Stark, Bran's grandfather. Or perhaps a younger brother. Or a brother to Lord Rickard's father. Sometimes Old Nan told it one way and sometimes another. In all the stories, the little boy died at three of a summer chill, but old Nan stayed on at Winterfell with her own children. She had lost both her sons to the war when King Robert won the throne, and her grandson was killed on the walls of Pike during Balon Greyjoy's rebellion. Her daughters had long gone married and moved away and died. All that was left of her own blood was Hodor, the simple-minded giant who worked in the stables. But old Nan just lived on and on, doing her needlework and telling her stories. Well, we now know that she's far from the oldest living person in Westeros, thanks to a couple Targaryens. But I obviously enjoy this character, since I kind of obsessively hunt out lore and pieces for world building. But after Ramsay betrays Theon and sacks Winterfell, we never see this character again. The only official update comes in the form of an appendix side note during the fourth book, A Feast for Crows. Old Nan is mentioned amongst a few former Winterfell residents as being held captive at the Dreadfort, the last place in the world you want to be, considering this is the home of House Bolton, and at that time was being looked over by Crazy Ramsay while Roos was out of the kingdom. I don't think Theon would have ever put Old Nan in harm's way while pretending to be the savage Prince of Winterfell for his dad's attention. She looked over and spent time telling Theon all those same stories, like she did with Bran. About White Walkers, The Last Hero, Children of the Forest, and Bran and the Builder. Ramsay, on the other hand, would see very little value in keeping her around. While he ordered all of Winterfell to burn, Ramsay also had every man put to the sword. It was a massacre, and not a single man got a proper burial. When Asha, Theon's older sister, visits the ruined Winterfell to search for her brother, she says that wolves feasted on the corpses without any reverence for their two-legged kin. But women and children were spared. Not because Ramsay was showing them mercy, but to put them to work in his own family's castle as captives. George Moran even had to clarify to a fan who reached out to him that most women and children from Winterfell are still alive, though they are not in a good place by any means. 
This clarification was needed after the second book, because Ramsey only did say, Save me the phrase, the bastard was shouting as the flames roared upward and burned the rest. Burn it, burn it all. Kind of reminiscent of the Mad King. And that's literally how the book ends. We weren't even sure of Theon's well-being for a long while. Theon and Ramsay are barely mentioned in the third book, and their storyline isn't visited at all during the fourth book, A Feast for Crows. We don't visit a lot of characters during this book, because of the way the chapters were organized this time around. So Old Nan's condition is once again up for discussion. Even at her age, she survived the trip from Winterfell to the Dreadfor. Lucky for her, it was a very short distance, even if she did have to walk by foot. Winter hadn't hit yet, but it's now been around a year being held captive at the Dreadfort as a serving woman. Would the winter now finally arrived? Would the Boltons see old Nan worthy enough to feed and shelter? Because it's not like she's a noble woman with any bargaining leverage as a hostage. We don't get a real update on her well-being in the last book that came out, The Dance with Dragons. But Theon does weigh in on this question. He was once held captive here too, to a different degree, but still. While starting off his redemption arc, he thinks to himself, Theon led the way up the stairs. I have climbed these steps a thousand times before. As a boy, he would run up. Descending, he would take three steps at a time, leaping. Once, he leapt right into Old Nan and knocked her to the floor. That earned him the worst thrashing he ever had at Winterfell, though it is almost tender compared to the beatings his brothers used to give him back on Pike. He and Rob had fought many a heroic battle on these steps, slashing at one another with wooden swords. Good training, that. It brought home how hard it was to fight your way up a spiral stair against determined opposition. Sir Roderick liked to say that one good man could take a hundred fighting down. That was long ago though, they were all dead now. Jory, old Sir Roderick, Lord Eddard, Harwin and Hullen, Kane and Desmond and Fat Tom, Alan with his dreams of knighthood, Micken who had given him his first real sword, even old Nan like as not. So he thinks she's gone. That could be George Martin feeding us info indirectly. At this point in her life, any illness or injury could take her out, so the details don't really matter, kind of like with Aemon Targaryen who died on his boat journey. Now we gotta ask ourselves, would it make sense for the story to just end her life like that, off screen? And the only reason I say yes is Bran can develop this interesting character further with his green sight, while also going through his own character development. In all the story, Bran was the only one to show a real connection with her in any POV chapters. So it would be fitting to visit her while he travels through history. I mean, he already started. Bran witnessed a brown-haired girl, slender as a spear, on the tips of her toes, kissing a young knight as tall as Hodor. This time frame matches when Sir Duncan the Tall would have visited Winterfell during his travels, that we'll hopefully see in the upcoming prequel spinoff. Using his green sight to visit Old Nan again will also fill us in on Hodor's backstory, because it's not like he can do that for us. We still haven't gotten a hold the door moment in the books as of yet, and you know it's coming, even if it does have some changes. So yeah, I do think Old Nan's role in the current setting has come to an end. She would have to be Wonder Woman to withstand the Bolton treatment, and we all know that Hoder's genes didn't come from her side of the family. If you guys have a differing view, let's hear it in the comments. But for now, I'm done here. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.